Hi. Well. My name is Luna and this is my bedtime story for you. Fluff up your pillow and do get comfy. Oh. By the way please click subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Thank you and let's get started. This time we have a well-known old tale from Malaysia, which is the devouring rock. Without further ado let get into the story. Once upon a time, there lived a woman Makden Jung, in a rural village. She had two children, Muller and Pukin, whom she raised alone after her husband passed away. They had made a living through weaving and catching river fish, which she continued to do after her husband passed. However, as she was the sole breadwinner for the family, it was hard for Mac Danjun to earn enough for her and her children, so they lived very frugally and ate whatever they could catch. Not a day goes by that she did not feel the loss of her husband, but for her children's sakes. She swallowed her grief and continued working day in and day out, backaching and stomach grumbling. Mac Danjung greatly enjoyed I can't him back haul, the giant mud skipper. However, this fish was rare and quite difficult to catch. One lucky day, while fishing in the mangrove river near her home, she managed to catch the fish with her basket. Finally, she cried out loud with joy. I have been dreaming about eating this fish for so long. Feeling grateful, she took her fish and brought it home to share with her children. Upon arriving home, Mac Dan Jung began to prepare it for cooking. To her delight, she discovered that the mud skipper had eggs inside. This was her favorite part of the fish and a rare treat. I cannot wait to share this with my children. Mac Dan Jung thought to herself as she cooked the fish and its creamy delicious eggs in the simmering broth, which bubbled and danced as the fragrance of the spices wafted through the air. This was going to be the best meal she would have had since the day her husband passed. What a blessing it was! Her stomach croaked in agreement. After she had finished cooking, Mac Dan Jung called out to her daughter Miller who was the older of both siblings. I have cut the fish and the eggs into three portions, she told her, keep one for yourself, and feed the other to your younger brother. Leave the last portion for me. Take more fish if you want to but leave some of the fish row for me. After instructing her daughter, Mac Dan Jung then went to clean up and shower, leaving her children alone with the food. Both children were very hungry and immediately started feasting on the food. The younger brother, Bukin, was so hungry that he ate both his fish and eggs in a flash. However, he was still hungry and wanted to eat more. He started wailing. I'm still hungry. I want more fish eggs, give me more fish eggs. Miller, in an attempt to satisfy him reluctantly handed over her portion of the fish eggs which she had yet to eat. Bukin finished her portion quickly too, but still wanted more and threw a tantrum, rolling around on the floor and asking for more. Desperate to calm him down, Miller handed him their mother's portion of the food. When Mak Tan Jung came back to enjoy her meal, she was devastated to discover that her children had eaten all the fish eggs, leaving none for her. You. Ate all the food? There's none left for me? She asked quietly, as her daughter and son looked away from her. I'm sorry. Her daughter whispered, he kept asking for more. I did not know what to do, I boo. While Mac Tan Jung understood why her daughter had given her son the fish eggs, nothing could quiet the disappointment she felt deep in her heart. She fought back tears but her eyes betrayed her as they welled up in sadness. She had worked hard to provide for them and was looking forward to eating this dish that she had craved for so long. Without so much of a word to her children, Mac Dan Jung turned away and went to bed with her belly still rumbling. 
A unique part of the village they lived in was a mysterious rock that would open up to reveal a dark and deep cave. However, it was said that this rock would only open its mouth to those who are overwhelmed with sadness. It often lured people in distress by calling out to them, opening its entrance for people to wander in before closing, never to be seen again. Tossing and turning in bed, Mac Danjun kept recalling the incident that happened earlier. Deeply hurt by her children's actions, she started to hear the rock call out to her. She resisted and resisted, but after dwelling on her children's actions, Mac Dan Jung got up in the middle of the night and wandered into the forest towards the devouring rock. She arrived at the rock, its dark and ominous entrance beckoning to her. The rock yawned opened its mouth for her. Mac Dan Jung walked in as if she was hypnotized, not noticing that her shawl had unraveled and fallen outside the cave's entrance. The rock closed its entrance shut with no trace of Mac Dan Jung, leaving behind only her footprints and shawl. A while later, Miller woke up with a feeling of dread, sensing that something was wrong. She turned over in their small hut only to realize that their mother had left. She called out to her, hoping that she was still somewhere around, but received no response despite straining her ears. She quickly shook Bukin awake, wake up, Ibu has disappeared. Bukin opened his eyes, looking around in surprise. The two siblings quickly left their hut, wandering around and calling out for their mother. They moved closer and closer to the forest, before Bukin looked down on the ground to see their mother's footsteps, leading towards the dreaded rock. He grabbed Miller's hand and began following the trail. The two children finally reached the rock, only to find their mother's shawl left in the dirt, the rock center and slung closed. They wailed and wailed, pounding their hands on the smooth surface of the rock that did not open, clutching onto the shawl. Miller was upset with her brother, this is all your fault, if you did not eat the egg. This would not be happening. Miller cannot blame her brother and calm down. She remorsefully said it's all right, we have no family, no mother nor a father. The brother was satin, I will follow you anywhere that you go, sister. By morning, the children were exhausted and had accepted their fates as orphans, forever regretting their selfish actions. That's it for that story, guys. How about it? Can you go to a sleep now? If you have a story too please do email me your story. I place my email on my description box. Till next time, bye.